Hello, and welcome to the Shared Practices Podcast. This is an episode from the Dental Success Summit with Kira Dent and Dr. George Hariri. This was a lot of fun. George and I got to actually record in person for the first time ever. And I apologize because this is in a very large, crowded space. So there's going to be some room noise, but it's worth it. I also apologize slash don't apologize because for the next few episodes with George and I that we recorded in person, not only were they great interviews, and, and I absolutely love them, but we were sitting in front of the booth Swell, and you'll start to hear about Swell a lot in the next like four episodes. So by the time these three or four episodes are done, you're, you're going to know how strongly we feel about this and how uh, amazing of a service it is. So this interview with Kira is on her show as well, the Dental A Team podcast, which is fantastic. And we love anytime we can get Kira on the mic. It's worth the room noise, I promise. It's it's uh, very actionable, very detailed. And George and I both took away nuggets that we're going to be applying. So enjoy the interview. Here you go. One of the advantages of working with Blue Sky Bios implants is that if you're already familiar with a given system, whether it's Nobel Active, Nobel Replace, Zimmer, Strawman, Astra, it's really easy to make the switch because you're very comfortable and familiar with that system. You have the drills, you, you've placed those implants before. But what if you're new to either implants in general or to Blue Sky Bio and you haven't used any of those specific lines? Which one of the six lines of Blue Sky Bio implants would you choose? Which is a great question. So let's go back to the Facebook forums. The overall consensus, hands down, is the Biomax line which is the Nobel active compatible system, but with a narrow platform, single platform across all the different implants. Meaning if you go up in size, you keep the platform the same. What this does is it simplifies your inventory, makes life so much easier. So people were saying, can you get locators for Biomax? And boom, locators, we got locators. How about scanning? If you wanna scan this into Serac, take a Tybase NBA 4.5, and that's it. That one tie base will work for all sizes of the Biomax line. And then the advice when it comes to actually placing the Biomax line of implants is to place them just slightly subcrestal to give yourself room to get that emergence profile and the aesthetics and everything looking just right. So if you were hesitant to try out the Blue Sky Bio implants because of the plethora of options, you were just overwhelmed as to where to start, that is the hands down consistent number one choice of clinicians who are placing and restoring these implants in their offices. Biomax by Blue Sky Bio. Welcome to the Shared Practices and Dental A Team podcast. I am joined by my first in person podcast with both Dr. George Hariri and Kira Dent. This is a this is a first. Yeah, Richard and I have so we've only met in person once. Yep until today. Right. And this is our first time recording in person. Kind of weird. And Kira, we've all met Kira, but not as a podcaster in person. No, this is like going back to the glory days of, you know, Midwestern, like George and Richard, but we're real life number people. Nine? Don't even ask for more teeth. I'm not a tooth lunch lady anymore. Those days are beyond. <laughs> so no, it's super fun. I'm super excited to see you guys. We were all chatting about what we wanted to podcast on. And I'm like, Let's just bust out the mics. There's three of us. Let's just let's yeah. just do this. Yeah. Wait, can I can I real quick? I'm gonna do a total podcaster thing and tell a story about Kira and I in dental school. Cool. Oh, you embarrassed snap. me so bad one time. <gasps> George, I'm so sorry. I she made me sing. Like, and I don't sing. Is this for real? Yeah. You made me sing to get something that I wanted. Oh. It's like only if you <laughs> sing. Is, and I'm like, this I'm, is not gonna like, I'm not gonna sing. I'm not gonna give it Kira's to you. Kira's power getting to her head. So, did, did Lacey, yeah, I, I sang. did Lacey work there? Because Lacey, you, yeah, once, was, once yeah. Lacey was there, we started to get a little more crazy and yeah, do some more I, wild things. So I, I did something super uncomfortable. I have not forgotten it. And I got my tooth. But yeah, it was not hey, fun. Hey, well, you know, whistle while you work. And, uh, <laughs> whistle so, while it's, I, it's, I just <laughs> want to know what he's saying. I, I want to know the song. I honestly forgot. Okay, like, okay. I, I, wish I, I, like, I wish I remembered so I could like not tell you. But it, I, it would not make good I'm, radio. I'm glad so. that one of my memories, though, is like one of the lasting impressions of dental school. So I'm glad I stood out at least that way. I apologize. It was embarrassing. We didn't but... get enough trauma in dental school at Midwestern. They were too humanistic. So just introducing a little bit of hazing, Kira, that's, <laughs> we needed that, actually. Did I ever prank you, though, before practicals? Because I don't think I did that Richard's no, year. No, no pranks before practicals. Did you hear about the pranks? No, but I wouldn't have minded either. I was like super not worried Stressed about it. Oh, yeah, man. Maybe a little too not worried Those about it. Those were my glory. Or like when we did April Fool's jokes and I got an entire bench of students to move because we said they were electrical al 
like outings on, I think it was bench 11. And so that entire group, we got them all to move. Dr. Halkett was in on it. She's like, don't touch it, guys. You're going to get electrocuted. Like there's shots, like you cannot. <laughs> and everybody like picked up their stuff, moved. I was laughing so hard. But that's what made that job fun. I had to sit in a cage. I was a caged animal. Right. Eight hours a day, which, which was super fun. I'm not ragging on it at all. And, and but... now you travel every day to a new <laughs> practice. This is like all of the years of Midwestern angst. Now you just fly around the nation. No, oh, but this is fun. This is super fun to be sitting at a table with both of you. You guys have gone on, done amazing things. I love your podcast. I love the things you both have done. And it's fun to not just say this over the phone, but to look at both of you in the eyes and just be so proud of both of you. So this is it's so fun. fun. It's and good. Congrats on your new podcast, by the way. Thank you guys. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's, it's yeah, fun. Richard, he, uh, you gave it a big shout out on our show and then in our Facebook group well before it was released. So we said we'd wait and we didn't. So we apologize about that. No, yeah. that was my fault. Rookie mistake. <laughs> you should always have your podcast launched before you say you're going to launch it. Like you should never do that do surprise. Do a little mini test episode. Yeah, like make sure it's actually up on iTunes yeah. prior to telling it's the world. It's a process to get it approved. It's fine. Everyone, everyone lives and you learns. You stressed for a minute. Richard might have sent me quite a few text messages telling me it would all it would all work it's out. It's going to be okay. Oh, I, I didn't know it. this was a bigger thing than it was. Oh, it was a big thing. Oh, I apologize for bringing that up. No, no. It was, she needed to be harassed. Need, hey, it's okay. I made you sing. You can bring this up all you want. Yeah, there George. we go. Pay back. <laughs> well, I finally got even. We have some orders of business that we need to cover. And, and we the, do. The first is that this episode of the Shared Practices podcast and Dental AT Pump podcast is affiliated with a company sitting to the left of us called Swell. Yes. I'm trying to get them to look up. And yeah, they just looked they up did. and waved. <laughs> so I need to capture both of your guys' stories on air about Swell. So George, you give me your Swell experience. Yeah. So I kind of happened on them. I saw them online. And so we had been using legwork for our reviews. I still love legwork. I'm not going to like bash them or anything, but we were getting about five reviews a month. Okay. And which is better than what our sellers were getting when we bought the office, but it wasn't what we wanted long term. And so we we switched to Swell and did nothing different. It was kind of, and I know this, that- When was this that this happened? The beginning of the year. Okay, so this is 2019. Beginning yeah, like of year. January was the very first day. And it was like, I'm, you know, I'm new in an acquisition and I'm a big believer in like, you can only emphasize so many things. And I did team. not yeah. want to emphasize Google reviews. I just did not want to have our team worrying about it. I having just wanted team to meetings, be, having like yeah. trainings about it. And so like, that's just my style is like, I try to do only what I think is going to really impact the bottom line. And reviews is very important, but I wanted it to be automated. And so I switched to Swell. And then month one, we did like 25 reviews. And then month two, like 25 also. And so that's just kind of what we're doing now is like 20 plus reviews a month with no effort. And, and now are you the number one rated? In the area, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we are now in our like five mile radius. We have the most reviews by like 40. That's awesome. So I think we just hit 170. So, and, and this is where I, I, I make fun of Swell because George kept telling me about Swell and like how impactful it's been. And he's like, dude, you got to try this. But every time he'd tell me Swell, I like couldn't remember the name. <laughs> and I'd like text him again and be like, George, what was the name of that company again? And he's like, Swell. And then I'd like two days later, what was the name of that company again? So I, I've been making fun of their name on, on another podcast just to help people remember it. And, and I figured out a new way to make fun of their name. And it, it's, you can use them as a curse word. So you used to be like, dude, what the swell? What or, the swell? <laughs> or like, you know what? You just need to go to swell. Oh. Yeah. So that's, that's their new slogan is get the swell out. Get the swell out of here. And for, <laughs> get the swell out. And for me, I'm like, no, I remember swell because they do so well. So oh, it's the S and well. So, oh, so well. well. Like they do is so that, that well with Google. They do so, well. so well. They do so well. well. That's how I remember it. We're looking at so, the owners right now. Yeah. So that's what we're, <laughs> we are. So I'm like, they do so well at getting Google reviews. So it's obviously swell. swell. Yeah. No, so. that's, that is better. I was making fun of I was saying like swale because there's a whale in their logo. It's uh, cool. Swale. Also, gee, this is swell, guys. But this is, this real is really quick, good. The Google review thing, like once you become the most reviewed office in your area, it's like, pretty dramatic the impact that makes oh yeah i, mean, I don't know if yes. you have any like i have patients coming in all the time like you guys had the most reviews you guys yeah. have and it's like something that we've invested so little effort in but we just have the right software but that's also real life like what yeah. do we do in real life we go and check the restaurants and if they don't have great reviews we're like forget it yeah, not going not or that person with my i'm a girl you guys so i check for hair like the nail salons like all these different places if they've got bad reviews we don't go there and so I, I, when I was getting into Swell, because I didn't know about it, Richard, you told me about it. Yeah. I was on a plane and you said, have you checked out Swell? George loves them. And I was like, okay, cool. Did a quick like shout out. Like, has anybody used Swell? Because I'm about to introduce it to my clients before I let Mark's clients know. 
Yeah. I'm real protective of Mark's clients. So I, I beta test. Sorry. You're, you're poor clients. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, guys. Gonna, I think we're going to be one <laughs> of them. You will. It's so fine. I'll, All those Midwestern the students, guys, this is, you get to be my beta testers. But I just, I realized that they were doing something different and I loved it. They were fantastic. So, so give me a specific story if you can use Absolutely. Names. So there's a couple, Nick and Whitney. They are Midwestern grads as well. They're up in Mount Vernon, Washington. Bought a practice and it had very, very few reviews. I want to say maybe nine when they bought the practice. Okay. I could be totally making that number up. So I apologize. What I am not making up that I know for sure is I told them like, hey guys, just go try out Swell. Give it one to two months. That's all I want you to try. See, See what, what happens. happens because they have to get Google reviews. They're a fee-for-service practice and right. they have to bring in revenue. And there's two doctors instead of one. So we're extra like needing to make sure we produce and have a good practice. In one month's time using Swell, they have picked 56 Google reviews. Holy 56. Crap. I counted them because I was trying to tell another office to sign up. And Swell, they don't do anything else. They don't confirm your appointments. They don't send out the reminders. And I think that that's why they do this so well because they're laser focused and on Google reviews. I, I completely agree. And I love that they're like, they don't have dental pricing. Like they're not a dental exclusive company. Yeah, and pricing so is super reasonable. It's, it's, so we have a promo with them and we'll have the link in the show notes where we can get the $100 setup fee waived. And then I believe it's one fifty nine a month. I'll confirm and just bleep this out if I did it wrong. But I think it's at least 20 or 30 bucks off of their normal rate. So we'll have that in the show notes. If anyone is interested in testing out Swell, just go to Swell, Seriously. guys. And go to like Swell. from a dentist psychological perspective, like hearing positive things about yourself on a regular basis. That's true. It, it is. Imp- I don't know. It's like, I feel this, like I didn't think like about therapy. this. This is a good point. Yeah. You know, like I'm a new dentist and to have patients like say, oh this man, Dr. Good. George is awesome. Like love his team. You know, they made me feel so good. It's like, yeah. you know, maybe an experience like, I don't know if that went well. Then you see a Google review that's five stars. Like, okay, you know, like maybe I'm so a good dentist. Rather than going to therapy or, you know, getting some coaching, they can just go no, get more it's reviews. A, it's like a real thing. Really like, I'm more confident thing. with my patients that's now great. because I get positive reviews and I'm the most well-reviewed office in the area. Well, like, yeah. that's a real thing. Somebody told me you can spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on marketing. And another office told me we stopped paying our marketing bill and just use Swell because we get more Google reviews and that's better marketing because it's SEO. And, and it, it's like organic. It, you crush it, it. it. It drives the organic. Exactly. Yeah. And I look at our Google listing, it gets so many more hits now than it did just, I mean, we're like three months in and we went from like not first to first pretty quickly. I just love them. That's so awesome. even if you have a lot of Google reviews, I still personally think you can never have too many Google reviews. And they're all, I, Current. I love though that Swell, Swell, because we, we talked about like, what do they do different? There's so many people that do Google reviews. They send the link. Swell does the same thing. But what I think is, I'm going to just tie it back to my verbiage on it of they do it so well. I've used it and it's simple. Like I tried on another one the other day at an office just to see the difference. And I remember it like clicked me to a link that was branded with this company, the, you know, whether it was legwork or Yappy or whichever one, right. I don't care who it is. But they said like it had their branding on there and it said, do you want to leave a review? And I had to click yes to go to Google. And I thought right there is where it got lost. That's another because, friction point. Yeah. No, too hard. Whereas with the Swell links, I've tried them and they literally just take you right in. Straight to Google. It detects if you're logged yep. in. Five stars. And leave the message. Off I went. Yeah. It was yeah. I, like I say, well, it it's, doesn't... it's more than that, too, because like we had daylight savings doesn't happen in Arizona. It happens right? in like every other state. So our thing was off for two weeks. We did not get we got like two reviews. And then I'm like, oh, hey, what's going on? And then they switched it back and then like continued again, getting about a review a day. The timing so of it's when the they send the review so in the optimized evening. That even one thing is off and it doesn't work. So they kind of yeah. have just every part of it very finely tuned. Dialed the exact in. time the email sent, the exact words, everything. And so I think it's just, they just do it all. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's just, it's That's magic. Awesome. Well, I agree. It is totally magic. And I think that like we talked about before, and so I'll just circle around this one more time and be done. But what I found is when I first started doing businesses, I was like business happy. I just kept making business. I've had these great ideas. So we'd build a business for that. Let's do a hiring business. Let's do a consulting business. Let's do a front office yeah. business. And I realized as I've been maturing and doing more and more business that when I'm not laser focused in, I'm really not doing, I'm not having any movement. And in one of my mm. favorite books, Essentialism, they have a diagram mm. of a circle with book. lots of little arrows coming out of it or one circle with one arrow that's far, far past any of the smaller arrows. And the idea I think that Swell does well is they figured it out, they found a problem and they are laser focused on it. And they are by far the best Google review company I have ever worked with. And I work with a lot, a lot of offices nationwide. I hear yeah. a lot. 
and Swell hands down is the best. So I'm going to save a little on while, marketing. While being the most affordable, yes. like legitimately. So it's, it's very rarely that the thing that is the most affordable is also the best. Effective. So yeah. And the most effective. Yeah. So we'll wrap that up because we have some other things that we have to hit. But I just wanted to hear you guys oh, rave because we, we all love it. I've got some so well love over there. Like go uh, Swell. And don't Google Swell because it won't come up. It's Swell CX. CX. And I, yeah. I think yep. about it as like... It elim- don't even Google it. Just click on the I link say Swell the CX <laughs> because I remember they're so well at eliminating cancellations. You guys, I literally have to like remember this whole thing. So they do so well eliminating cancellations because if you've got awesome Google reviews... Oh, so well CX yep, cancellations. Yep, you got it. So that's uh, how I remember they, Swell uh, CX. Oh. CX. I say they eliminate you cancellations. You understand so much about their like <laughs> branding. I don't think that, that it's real. Sh- I think she's I made just know, all I, that I up. I just know it works. Like, that's what, that's <laughs> yeah. like my extent. Well, I have yeah. to tell people and get them to remember. That's my job. Like get team right. members to remember it's, NDTR. It is hard to get it to remember. And, and now we've done so that. Well, so well, they eliminate your cancellations. Go okay. find them. Okay. So I want to ask you guys, there's two things we wanted to hit. Sure. I wanted an update from George on kind of lessons learned in the last six months of his practice. And then I also wanted... Kira route slip. So we have Let's Kira do Kira here. first and then we'll kind of switch over to my story afterwards. Yeah, because we are here at Summit and I've got to, you know. You yeah, so we like are recording work. from the Dental Success Summit, which is... <laughs> from breakfast. So if there's clinking and background noise, I'm sorry. Usually we like to sequester ourselves into well, we some were, dark corner. We were pretty quiet it and then quiet. it got pretty busy, which is great. Happened. Mark Costas is doing a fantastic job as always and it's a pleasure it's to a good be event. here. This so. is so much fun. So let's do the... The condensed version, not the condensed version, but the, the George wants a deep dive. Yeah, I, so I just want like everyone, <laughs> like I feel like I hate when there's buzzwords without like actual detailed information that somebody yes. can take and do on Monday. Okay. And so for me, it, I think the routing slips is becoming that. And everyone's like routing slips, routing slips, but like nobody like takes the time to like digest one and go through the process with the team and how much it organizes the practice. Sure. Which which we do in the case acceptance course. If anyone signed up for that, and we're, it's not currently open, it's going to open up sometime in the future. Get on our email list. We'll, we'll send that out. But I was so proud of the content that you built for our course Thank on, you. on case acceptance. Thanks and for doing it with me. It was fun. It was a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, that was a unique lecture where you guys are both talking about it. It was like an interview lecture combination. Yeah. And that, that came out very strong. Well, we tried, we tried the whole like me on my own. And I was like, Richard, I think... Richard had the idea. He said, you know, Kara, let's you and I go I was like, at this. I, you have better, <laughs> you, you can, you sent this lecture to me and I cut it up and I edited it. And I was like, no, like Kira, I know there's better content in you. Let's, let's do this again together. And we had a blast. So it was fun. let's, let's uh, break this down for people. So for somebody who's like routing slips, what is that? Okay. So a routing slip, I say is a one page patient chart, basically. So, you know, back in the day when we had charts, or if you're still in the day with ch- paper charts, maybe move on and find route slips. They're a great, great blessing. But it's really just, it's a printed out. It tells a lot of information about that patient on a single, most of the time, one page paper. And every single software, except for Curve, that's the only one I found that does not have a route slip that they can just pre-print. They should switch to Open Dental anyways. I agree. I agree. I'm a pretty big Open Dental fan. But Eaglesoft, Dentrix. I like Dentrix. Dentrix is my my first love. Open Dental is the second. So I'm getting more and more on board with Open Dental and then Eaglesoft. So all the major softwares do route slips for you. And basically what it is, is, you know, like your entire day for the, your whole appointment book for the day, every single one of those patients coming in, it will automatically print a route slip for each person. And there is a lot of information. What I love about Open Dental is you can customize these route slips. All other softwares, you cannot customize. So they just pre-populate whatever the software deemed was most important. So all of them across the board will have patient name, their appointment time, what they're coming in for. You can get medical alerts on that, what the medical alerts are. Open Dental is rad in the fact that you can just change it up and get it in whatever order, cut the things you don't want because we gloss over it. On Dentrix and Eaglesoft, I feel like the reason a lot of team members don't like them from Eaglesoft and Dentrix is it's just a lot of information. It's so busy. You can't like, it's like I'm looking at this whole thing of much right. information that I don't know what to do with. Right, exactly. And so with that, I always just cut it down, scrimp it down and highlight it. That's how I'm able to filter through because a highlight will draw your eye. Yes, I pay someone up front for 30 minutes a day to highlight these route slips because I think it's that important. But really, overall, an entire route slip, it just gives a lot of information. And if you digest that information, I have found that I've been able to increase practice profitability the day patient experience, VIP patient experience. If they're coming in for one occlusal, but they have like 12 other fillings, why are we just doing that one occlusal? And I love, (laughs) this is a shout out to the teams. 
when I go in, they're like, but Kira, I look at it every single time a patient comes in. Obviously, I'm a great team member. Well, fantastic. High five. But you're also an awesome human being, which means you forget when you're busy. We all do that. Every single one of us forgets. So the route slip creates a routine that we never forget. I was just reading an article the other day that talked about routines. It's like, why do pilots, why do our, like, why do hospitals, yeah. why do they do checklists? And it's like, because we are human beings and we forget. And I believe a route slip can be a checklist to look for the most important things and move on from there. So with that said, George, you wanted a deep dive on them. So most route slips have patient name, like I said, appointment, the amount of time that the procedure will be, what provider they're seeing. That's a big deal, especially if you have multiple providers checking to make sure that we're billing out to the appropriate provider. It also talks about family members on there. So we can look to see, are all of our family members scheduled? Is every single one of them scheduled or or are they not? That's a great way to increase your reactivation. I tell people when patients are in the dental office, they're thinking about dentistry. When we're calling them when they're at Costco, trying to pick up seven gallons of milk because they've got a huge family. Obviously, that's what you buy, George. Obviously. Seven gallons. Seven gallons. Just... I've never I'm done that. Intolerant, <laughs> but, <laughs> <George>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the point, like when I'm calling them and they're not at the dental office, odds of me getting them scheduled is not as convenient for the patient. And I don't find it as effective as when they're there. As we've worked with design ergonomics, I've actually gotten to know the founder of design ergonomics, Dr. David Ahern. He's a dentist, practicing dentist, still practicing to this day, despite the, the many companies that he's running. One of the things that I love about him is that he is obsessed with improving the flow and productivity of offices. And he has delved deep into the research inside of dentistry and outside of dentistry, and actually had done a lot of experimentation and research on his own. They've found that the flow and layout of your practice can help make anxious patients more comfortable and can make patients in general more willing to accept treatment. They've found studies that have shown that requiring a buyer to move from one location to another during the decision process has a negative impact. So we present treatment in the chair, and then we take them to the front desk, and they've found that decreases case acceptance. So to address this, Design Ergo creates operatories that are both comfortable and fully able to present treatment, take payment, and schedule procedures. This is just one aspect of the patient experience that Design Ergonomics has figured out and bakes into their project development and the layout of your office. So if you're doing a startup and have complete control over the patient experience and the flow of your office, well, why not work with a team who cares about all of these things, who's done the research and who has done it over and over and over in very high producing, very successful offices. Reach out to Design Ergonomics, go to www.desergo.com. We've arranged for exclusive discounts on a wide variety of services. So be sure to let them know that you're a Shared Practices listener. So the unscheduled family members is one of my favorite things. Yes. Do you have more success getting them in for recare or getting them in for unscheduled treatment? When they're in the practice, I just schedule those appointments there or I use them if my schedule falls apart. So for example, if you're coming in and your wife is not scheduled for recare, I have found I'm not going to go, I'm not looking at your wife on scheduled treatment because all that's on there on the route slip would be your wife if she's got her cleaning scheduled or not scheduled. And then the treatment that's on a route slip is to that patient specific. So it would be your unscheduled treatment that's on there. Uh -huh. And so when you come in, if I can capitalize on you, obviously pay attention to HIPAA laws, but if I can capitalize and make your experience better, do more treatment on you, the patient in there, or get you scheduled for your cleaning if you're not scheduled and get your wife scheduled for her cleaning, I just hit three appointments right there based on looking on that one route slip. And it took me minimal time and it was a better experience for you as the patient. Yeah, because you didn't have to get an annoying call. Exactly. So, and, and would you have the team member like at the end of the day for the next morning, print off all the route slips and then at the morning meeting, are you going over these? Like, how do you actually, if you want to make your team use this and it'd be something you do, how would you do that? Yeah, so what I do is I say, I personally like to have appointments confirmed 48 hours in advance. Okay. So I don't like the 24 hour. That's too hard as a scheduler. My day falls apart. I've got to try and cram that in. I don't care for that. Confirm 48. Okay. 48. And as soon as they're confirmed, usually I like all appointments confirmed by 12 o'clock at the latest. So mid morning, all route slips are printed and highlighted ready to go. So then the back office team can come snag those route slips and they basically quote unquote chart prep just using route slips for the next day. Mm. 
So then they're looking at it. Every person's looking. I use a morning huddle prep sheet. So they actually use these route slips to look for unscheduled treatment, recare, and it's a checklist. So they're not missing it. So the whole back office team picks up these route slips. It's highlighted to look at the pertinent information that really will draw their eye. If you just give them a white piece of paper, your team member's not even going to... I am shocked at how many times I go into an office and they're like, well, Kira, this note's not on there. And I'm like, oh, it's actually right here. And they're like, oh, it is there. Like there's so much on these route slips. If you just sat down with your team and digested a route slip, like let's look at every single box in here and talk about what it's for and then determine what we'll highlight. I like to highlight name, appointment, family members needing recare. If there's a balance due, any notes, any medical alerts, and also the treatment for that day, and then look to see if there's pending treatment. And if your software is awesome, like this is where Open Dental's not as great, it will tell you if they're scheduled for appointments at the bottom or not. Okay. So those are like my big highlights that I like on a route slip. And then you just get into a routine rhythm. The back office team can prep with those route slips. And then you use these route slips as the patient comes in. So they, they're printed the two days in advance. They go to the back office team. They're all highlighted, ready to go. And you can even print them just for the next day. You don't have to go two days out. You can do the next day. They go to the back office team, back office team preps for morning huddle. They come back to the front office team. And then that route slip, that route slip will either go back to the front office and the front office will like stick it in a bin. So, you know, when the patient's arrived, back office team grabs the route slip. It always follows the patient. Or what I used to do, route slips always stayed in the back. There just had to always be a route slip in the room with that patient. So I personally would take all the route slips, put them on the trays. So then when they went to the room, we knew exactly which patient was in each room. So it made it a lot more efficient to know where which patient was going where because they usually don't follow the columns on the schedule, if that makes sense. Okay. So what other questions about implementation do you have, George? So I think that covered what I was looking for. Okay. I, it's, so I think for me, the bi- I was looking for the big opportunity. And for us, we use it as a pre-checkout almost. Uh-huh. So when our patient... So we have one front desk to check out. And so sometimes we have three hygienists. And so it's sometimes sure. hard to get... So now if the patient... It has no balance and everybody knows what to look for. Then they just leave. Got it. They have their next appointment set up. They're out. Uh That way we can like avoid that flog. Right. But I think for me, I was looking for what are the big opportunities? And it seems like the big opportunity is scheduling recare for that patient. Like if they're Mm -hmm. coming in as an emergency and they're not scheduled in hygiene, you can get them in hygiene and for their family members. Yes. And I'm going to take a few more because on there, there's more. I also put NDTR on there. NDTR, next visit, date, time, recare. So it's a perfect handoff. So if they are busy up front, you can hand that route slip to the front office team. They know exactly what to schedule them for. So we're not missing that scheduling opportunity. That's a huge opportunity on route slips. I say that's it's the baton passed from team member to team member. And we did that whole episode on NDTR and how to use the handoff and, and the route slips being central to that. So if anyone's interested, we, we can link back to that episode where we yes. did a deep dive into NDTR from yes. our case acceptance season. But also, I, I totally agree. That's a huge piece. But George, also, it's, it's one of those things where I feel like it, it also, the front office team, I use it as another opportunity where in Morning Huddle, we're talking about family members needing recall, treatment plans that could we could extend and add better VIP care for our patients. I don't know how many front office team members are listening to this, but when my day fell apart, the fastest way to fill a schedule is to pull from the patients already coming in. So if in morning huddle, we've already dumped all this information simply from the route slips, but people are like, but Kira, we can just check through. We can look through. I will tell you, it's kind of like, remember that the movie with the plane that took off and the birds came in and they hit and the plane ended up crashing and they were like, well, why didn't you, do you remember the Hudson? Uh, I didn't actually. Oh, Sully. Like yes, yeah, Sully. I love uh, that movie. Okay. And remember how in the, when they were doing it in simulation, they said, well, you had enough time to turn around. Do you remember this part? Yeah. And so they didn't, they didn't account for reaction time. Exactly. So the reaction time is what we're trying to eliminate in a practice. That's the exact point of, you know, so the birds came, they hit him and they're like, well, Sully, you had enough time with the birds hitting you to turn around and get back to not have to land in the Hudson. But he said, you guys, when you're flying and you're hit with that, you guys who are in simulation know what's going to happen to you so you can plan for it. However, when I'm flying the plane, I have to figure process it out. It. I have to process and come up with a solution that takes time. Well, as schedulers, when our day falls apart, we react. We have to figure out what are we going to do. If in the morning huddle, I'm given all these people that can be hygiene patients or I know who's coming for hygiene, I have less reaction time, less wasted time because I have found when hygiene falls off, you have about a five to 10 minute window. Otherwise, that entire hour is gone. 
for you to bring a patient up, you can fill that spot really quickly. Otherwise, you lose that entire hour of productivity because it takes too long to find the patient, call them and get them into your practice before that window of opportunity is gone. So are you saying that like if there's a hygiene opening and then you would use a routing set to know that there's a patient in the restorative chair that's overdue for their cleaning, then they would slide right over and get it done that day? Correct. So that's one way to look at it. Another way is if you're coming in, but I know your wife's overdue, I could call you before like, hey, you know, you are coming in. Is your wife free to come in with you? We could see you at the same time. Or I use it as, oh my gosh, like hygiene fell apart. But I know these three patients have hygiene. If I push them up earlier in my day, we could still see them treatment side, but I could also fill my hygiene side, make your day better as a patient because it's a win-win, get your teeth cleaned and get your restorative. So this is like a patient who calls in the morning of and says, hey, I'm not going to make it today. Not like you get to the hygiene patient and they know so at that point it's too late. <laughs> well, even if they're there, because sometimes doctor schedules aren't full. And right. if we know ahead of time, hey, George, Dr. George, we know that Kira has a filling. She's only scheduled in hygiene, but we've got a huge opening at 10 o'clock. Dr. George, if you can go in and do our hygiene exam right at the beginning of the appointment, you could probably get her to stay to do that filling. We could fill your side. So it makes for a much more proactive approach instead of reactive. If you go in at the end of my appointment and say, oh, Kira, we could get that filling done. I am at the end of my appointment. You're like done. You're checked out. I had planned. But if you get me at the beginning of my appointment, maybe I could change some things around because I have an entire hour I'm scheduled to be at the office. Maybe I can change a meeting around, stay for that filling. It'll make my life easier. So I think that route slips create this entire opportunity when used correctly. And it's simple. It's a simple route slip, but it has so many pieces that you can tie into to use as opportunity finders. And I hope I didn't like gloss that too quickly for you, but you really could deep dive. Let me talk about, let's do like some practice therapy here. Do you have some time? Yep. Like four minutes and then you probably got to go. Okay. I'll make it quick. So in our, in our office, we have all the routes that's printed, they're Uh put in folders by provider. Okay. So every provider has their own folder. And then our hygienists were, for example, would come and grab it. So at the beginning of the day, all the route slips are printed and in the folders in order that they're coming in. Perfect. Uh huh. So like if I have a cancellation at 10 Uh and my hygienist has a nine o'clock patient that has treatment, if it's already sitting in the folder, mm-hmm. how are we going to like, would my scheduler go grab the folder, look through those route slips and see who has treatment? So good. So thank you. I don't think I explained that point well enough. I, I require route slips to be reviewed the day before. So I make a morning huddle where they have to fill in. It's just a quick checklist of every single patient. So my eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, we go through a whole thing. Do they need recare? Do they have plus treatment that we could do? Are there any medical alerts that we need to know about? So then when we come to morning huddle, it's like, okay, George, I'm hygienist. My nine o'clock and 10 o'clock have treatment that could be done today. You're like, fantastic. Great. Well, no, because, and then as the front office team, I'm sitting there writing down all the patients that have treatment and recare. So that way I don't even have to go look through the schedule to find them. I don't Uh, have to go back to find the route slip. It's already given to me. So you guys make like a master sheet. Correct. So that whoever at, at the annotates huddle. the routing slip says nine o'clock patient has unscheduled filling. Exactly. Ten o'clock patient has unscheduled husband. You yes. know, and then you go through. So then the scheduler, so we could print that for both of our front desk and they both have the answers right there. Correct. And I don't like the schedulers, the front office team. I feel like the back office team's already prepping. They should be prepping for treatment. So then in morning huddle, they they dump it all out there and schedulers should be grabbing all this information because that makes their life easier. The back office team gives you all the information schedulers in front office just need to write down this data information. So this is less work for the front desk and allows them to, to make their job easier. Like Correct. It, okay. So that's a big piece that... Yeah. A little that's detail. A, that's a big piece right yes. there. That's huge. Yes. See, for me, I was always like, what are we doing with this annotated <laughs> information? Like, it's just following the patient around like, cool, but that's Which is huge. Great. That's huge. Yes. That's so where you get that sheet? So what I do is I have a front office team. So that, we don't do huddles. Okay. Well, there Maybe you go. You should. People always ask how I added 50 grand to one of my offices in one month. It was through morning huddles, <laughs> route slips, and handoffs. So if you want to know, there's my magic sauce for you. Okay. But the morning huddle, I have the front office team. They have their form. The back office team have their, those little quick checklists that they fill out the night before. It's literally an Excel spreadsheet, guys, with just little boxes. And it has patient name, appointment time, what they're being seen for, family members needing recare, additional treatment, and medical alerts and notes. And back office team, I ask for x-rays because I'm sick of crowns not having PAs because you lose payment on that. And also making sure lab cases have all been received. So the route slips get printed the day before. They're given to the back office team. Back office team goes through the route slips, goes through the charts. They prep for their morning huddle. Then after that, route slips either stay in the back office and they follow the patient around or they go back up to the front office, like you said. And then we grab them per patient. At morning huddle, 
hygienist starts my eight o'clock, 10 o'clock and five, five o'clock. I'll have additional treatment. Dr. George, I think the number one that you could get in on since you have an opening at nine o'clock, if you can come into my eight o'clock, do that exam early, we could push them over onto your side. Mm. Front office team, writing all this down heavily, making sure that they understand it. And then we all break. I go up front, my day falls apart. My nine o'clock's not showing up. I look, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got seven patients coming in for recare. I can fill the schedule. Or if my day is great and it doesn't fall apart, all seven of those patients checking out, we're rescheduling all their family members, all their additional treatment, because we know they need appointments. So when you're like, bye, see you guys later. How many of those appointments walk out the door because we didn't even know that they had it? They're left and we're like, shoot, we need to get them in for a cleaning. And we totally forgot, put them on the recare list. We'll call them later. It's a, it's a proactive approach instead of reactive. So it's just a way of like having the hygienist start their day, knowing which one of their patients are, where are the opportunities in their eight patients of that day? Right, right. Okay. And if you want to take it one step further, I'm giving a ton right now, George, and I'm like talking real fast, but this is my favorite because the next step is I realized in offices, we we're giving so much information that doctors, you didn't even know like, hey, okay, Kira listed off 25 patients that needed treatment. Like, I don't know which one they are. Like assistants, just tell me, good luck. So what we've started doing is in every column in offices, I snagged this from an office in New York and I thought it was genius. This is not my own idea. They actually on like open dental or dentrix, you can change the appointment to a different color. So like if all now in Eagle Soft, this will not work because you have multiple colors anyway. But dentrix, like what's your provider color, Dr. George? Blue. Blue. Okay. So all your appointments are blue. Now, if we know that I'm coming in at 10 o'clock and I am the patient that we think is the most likely to do same day treatment, we turn my color to a different color. So it'd be orange. So on your schedule, you see that you have one orange in column one, one orange in column two, one orange in column three, one orange in column four. So across the board at different times, you see your four selected patients that you know have plus treatment or a recare. And that's who you're... So you're going to pop into exams earlier. You're going to try and do same day treatment on them because it changes colors on your schedule. This is incredible because for me, the big thing is like, I love same day dentistry from like a philosophical perspective. Yes, same. The implementation of it. The logistics. Yeah. Sucks sometimes because you're like, <laughs> this is organized same day treatment. Yeah, exactly. Instead of chaos, it makes it feel like scheduled dentistry. Like, yeah. oh, like I most likely I'll have a 10 o'clock right yeah. here from the nine o'clock patient. Yes, yes. And, and doctors, then my hygienist can get them numb. Correct. And if you know this beforehand, that's why I'm saying that whole solely principle, the reaction time in dentistry is so key. You only have five to 10 minutes to convert same day dentistry. Yeah. So if you're not on top of that, right on the A game, mm. you lose the opportunity and they walk out the door. And it's huge. So if you can color change. So I found you just choose one or two or three patients per day that you're going to target it. And you're like, hey, I think Kira, Kira is super busy. She's coming in at nine o'clock. She's got a filling. She's our targeted patient. Dr. George, get into this exam early. Make sure you talk to her, see if we can convert her same day. It's going to be awesome for her. Awesome for the practice. We're not stressed when you're throwing in same day dentistry because the team could actually prepare. It's kind of like pre-scheduled same day dentistry. Exactly. You got Uh, it. That's exactly right. I love that. (laughs) I love that. So George, there's the deep dive on route slips for you. Was it worth it? That was phenomenal. I'm so glad we did that. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Awesome. You You guys are so welcome. You're so welcome. So I know you guys are going to chat more, but thank you so much as always for letting me be a part of this. Dental A team listeners, this will also be on ours. So just know that I love George and Richard, they're fantastic, fantastic people. So if your doctors aren't listening to shared practices right now, pop on over. They do deep dives on all this stuff. I do a lot of gloss, but they they make me deep dive and I love it because I think everybody knows these principles. And then I realize like it's not the principles, it's the specifics that until we just like keep picking your brain, you're like, but wait, (laughs) for me it was that that extra sheet that that for me made it click. Got it. And it's that like because I'm like this piece of like, yeah, that made so much sense. I love it. I love it so much. much, You guys, well, you guys take care. Can't wait to see you over there. And um, I'll come grab all my podcast stuff from you guys later. Sounds good. Thank you, Kira. Yeah, we're borrowing Kira's equipment here. Thank you. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know it was a shorter episode, but it's George is more fun in real life than he I ever knew he would be. So uh, you'll you'll hear that elsewhere as well coming up here soon. But when when he lets his hair down, it's, it's a pretty fun experience. He's a fun guy. Enjoy this episode and, and more to come. Next week, we're going to do an interview updating George, his journey, his last few months, child number two, where his practice is at. And actually, I mean, one of my favorite interviews, hands down, with, with George. So this was a fantastic interview with Kira. Another fantastic interview coming up with, with George and I. Hope you guys enjoy and we'll talk with you next week on the Shared Practices podcast.